This morning, we are digging deeper into bullying, the mental health consequences it creates, and how parents can spot it. So last week, we learned that three students at Creekside High School in St. John's County were arrested after deputies say they created a hit list targeting classmates to either beat up or kill. Investigators say the 15-year-old and two 14-year-olds said that they had been bullied by other students. Also last week, we showed you this stunning video of an 11-year-old boy running to his mother's car, getting a gun and then firing at two teenagers, both of whom were wounded. The boy's attorney told a judge that the boy had been bullied during football practice. Lori Osachi is the clinical director of River Shores Counseling is joining us this morning. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Morning. Lori, first, would you please define what bullying is? Well, there are different types, types of bullying and some of them are not easily seen. They fly under the radar. So there's physical bullying, which is actual or threats of violence. Then there is verbal abuse, which verbal bullying, which is making fun of someone, mocking them, um, taunting them. There's also social bullying, which is destroying someone's reputation, talking behind their back, turning people against each other. There's sexual bullying, which is threats of sexual violence or, um, you know, mocking someone sexually, and there's cyberbullying, which is using electronics or the internet or phone to destroy someone's reputation or bully them directly. I mean, you've listed off, I think I lost track at four or five. It can be overwhelming to a parent when they hear that because you're thinking about just your day-to-day -day life and all of the things that could touch your child that could make them feel terrible about themselves. And you just, as a parent, just say to yourself, I mean, so it's why I've had this rush of emotion. What can we do as parents to find out if this is happening to our kids, because I mean, you and I know we have teenagers, yours are older, mine are getting older, but the reality is, is it's hard to get them to talk much about their day when they walk in the door. That's so true. And there's often a stigma against reporting bullying. There's often threats that if you tell somebody it's gonna get worse. So it's very difficult to get kids to tell, but luckily there are a lot of nonverbal cues that we can look for in our kids. And we usually have a feeling in our gut, our kid is not right. Something, their personality isn't the same. A big indicator is they don't want to go to school. A kid that's formally loves going to school and then doesn't want to go, that's a big sign. Uh, if they become more, more withdrawn or tearful or irritable, that can be a sign that something is off. So once you, your gut is telling you something's going on, how do you start that conversation to find out if it, you know, if, if something that your child is experiencing is making them just feel terrible about going to school? Well, you know, this is every topic we talk about, I think it's the same. You, it's not just one conversation. It's an, it should be an ongoing conversation and attempt to educate your kids that bullying is, exists it takes different forms. Encourage your kid to stand up for others who are being bullied and to tell, tell a trusted adult to, if that's happening to them, there's nothing wrong with feeling scared or upset that that's not a sign of weakness. It's normal when someone is hurting you. And just to make an open environment where they can come to you if something is wrong. One conversation is not enough. And is there a point where, where you know, you've, you've created that trust with your child and they are opening up to you, but is there a point where it's a signal to us as parents that, hey, I, I might need help as a parent and my child might need more help than the advice that I'm giving to them? Well, absolutely. I mean, there are counselors like myself who are, you know, who can work with kids who've been bullied. I've worked with a lot of kids who've been bullied, unfortunately. And getting the school involved, Schools have anti-bullying policies and to hold them to it, uh, to make sure there's accountability. You can bring in other trusted adults to help. You don't have to do it alone. And that's the most important part. Uh, thank you. Lori Osachi is the clinical director of River Shores at Counseling.